Hey guys and welcome to the first tutorial of this series and to go over some requirements you need a basic understanding of JavaScript. I'm going to be going over most things but it's just easier for me and for you if you have a basic understanding of JavaScript before you start. You're also going to need Node installed on your system. You can learn how to do this on the Node website and it's pretty straightforward so I don't think a tutorial is required there. If you have any questions or help, feel free to comment on this video below, or you can just go to the GitHub repository for this video and open up a new issue. But before you do so, just check there's no issues already covering your question, because there may be. So, without further ado, let's jump straight in. Hey guys, so you can see that we've started with an empty project here. And if you look in the project directory, there is also nothing in there. So the first thing we're going to need is a package.json file and this is going to allow us to put in some basic information about the app and also install node dependencies etc etc. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to do npm init and then this is going to ask us a bunch of questions which we're going to fill out. Uh, I'm going to just do 0.0.1 .0 sort of in alpha stage and then maybe a scalable API. And we're just going to leave the entry point and the test command out. This GitHub repository is automatically filled in because, as you can see, it's linked to my GitHub here. And if you go to github.com forward slash helping develop, you'll be able to see all of the tutorials that I'm going to be doing. And you'll be able to add some issues if you have any questions or maybe some pull requests if you have any suggestions. So just going to ignore that and ignore keywords. I'll put in myself for the author and ignore license and then it's just going to be like is this package.json file okay for you we're going to be like yeah okay so now it's created this package.json file which we can use to install node dependencies so how do we do that we just do npm install and then the dependency name so in our case we want to install express and then we just do dash dash save and it's going to save us to the dependencies list So once that's been done, you'll see that it appears here on the dependency list with the version. It also creates a package.lock file, and this is just going to lock the versions in so that we don't have to worry about this updating any breaking changes. It's also going to create a node modules file, and this is where all of the dependencies that we install and all of the dependencies this dependency uses is going to be installed. So that's going to be a pretty hefty file. We normally never open that, only if we just want to like debug some things. So the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to open or create a new folder called app. Next, we're going to have a new file within that folder called server.js. This is when we're going to write the express server. And it's super basic. So let's import express first. I say import, but I really should say require. The reason why I say import is because you can import it using like Babel and ECMAScript 6. But we'll be going over that in a couple of tutorials time and maybe converting these requires into imports and explaining why it's better. But for now, we're just going to use require. Like so. Now how we set up a app instance is we just save the app variable with the express function. And this function is going to return an instance of the app. The next thing we need to do is we need to listen on the port. Uh, we don't have a port right now, so we're just going to hard code it in. So let's do app.listen and we'll say this first variable here, or this first parameter even, is port and it's a number. So let's just do 2000. And then it's going to return a callback function. So this callback function here uh, is going to have one parameter in, which is going to be the error, if any. This will equal to null if it does not exist, which is kind of what we hoped for. And you can see here I'm using an arrow function or ECMAScript shorthand, but you can just the same write it like, like this, and it will work exactly the same. I just think that this is a bit of a nicer way of writing them. So next thing we can do is we can say if there is an error, then we want to maybe console.log the error and we'll put a little note to ourselves to improve the error handling and we want to do process.exit and this will just exit the server so that it, if there ever encounters an error it won't just keep running 
So the next thing you want to do is maybe let's just do another console.log and say server is now running. Okay, so now we have this. We need to have some sort of way to access this file or run this file. And we can do that in package.json. Under the script section here, we can just add a comma and we can say start. And we're going to set it to node and then we're just going to set it to the app server.js and that's just going to basically run the node function on this server.js so that if we go back here we can just do npm run start and then this is going to do server is running so as simple as that we have a express server running and listening for commands uh, I mean if you try and go to this localhost 2000 then it's just going to be like cannot get we're going to be going over routing and everything in a couple tutorials time, but the next lesson we're going to be going over is environment files or environment variables and how to kind of pull this pull into an environment file and maybe you have production and development environments. But stay tuned for the next lesson. Don't forget to subscribe to Help and Develop and check out all of the tutorials or questions people have on the Help and Develop GitHub page. Cheers. Bye-bye.